G'day, Blay Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing good as gold. Got a couple of golden bits of goodness here all the way from the Philippines. Well, uh, brass to be more exact. But uh, we've got a new mech mod from MCM, the M4H2. This is the Ultim Edition. I'm running in single 21700 mode. It's got a beautiful Ultim body, which goes very nicely with the Ultim accents on the Fatality M30. It also comes in black Delrin, and I've got the stacked section on the bottom here, so running a series setup. I've got the uh, Pandemic Plague Within Edition RDA on top there, looking very nice. So single 21700 side fire mechanical, following on from the M4H1. It's got a little bit more of a, a rounded, kind of smooth feel to it. I'll show you what the uh, the first one looks like when we get down the up and close, but I like the uh, sort of changes. It still has very much the same kind of uh, vibe that the uh, the first edition did. Let's take them for a ripperoo. I've got uh, some 0.18 ohm aliens. I think in the uh, fatality here. And now it in stacked mode with the pandemic. I think I'm running about a 0.3 ohm set of coils. Fuck tons of clouds as you can see there in series mode and a clever design. You can fire it from two sides. It's got a big long fire bar on one side and then it's got kind of more of a, a side fire button on the other. So you can take your pick in terms of whether you want to fire it with your thumb like this or squeeze it um, with the bar like that. So we'll get down and have a look at all the bits and bobs shortly, but before we can view that, yeah, we've got to have a fucking beer. Found me a big can of Scottish beer that I don't think I've had before. It's called Bellhaven Black, a Scottish stout. A deliciously smooth black stout is brewed with three types of Scottish malt and roasted barley to create a rich, smooth stout with roasted coffee aromas and dark chocolate notes. Enjoyed in Scotland and around the world. Sounds pretty good to me, just a 4.2%, and I think these guys are brewing out of uh, Dunbar over there in uh, Scotland. Let's just see how she bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink oh, I love me a fucking nitrous pour. Look at that, the cascading fucking creaminess. We'll just let that settle for a moment, get the uh, creamy head to the fucking top. Oh, smells good. Got that sort of Guinness kind of aroma to it. That's a thick, stouty, chocolate, coffee aromas. A fucking cheers. That's fucking nice. Very creamy. Very, very creamy. It's got a very similar sort of taste as I was expecting. The smell kind of gave it away. Similar to your, uh, your Guinness, but I think maybe a bit more creamy. I think it's got less of the roasted sort of flavors that you get with a Guinness. I find Guinness quite sort of uh, roasted and uh, this has got a bit less of that but more creaminess. Yeah, less of those sort of sharper kind of bitter notes that you might get with a Guinness and more creaminess. There is a nice little bit of chocolate in there. Not as much coffee, I don't think, as a Guinness, but um, I'm really liking the, the creamy flavours out of this beer. That is not fucking bad at all, Scotland. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. Got me some Dark Star scones or scones, however you want to fucking pronounce it. Uh, it is that sort of thick cake the old scones, like a thick sort of cake thing with a bit of jam and cream in there. I don't think I've ever read to the back of the bottle of this one. It says, scones are back and they're beautiful as the rolling English countryside. Freshly baked scones, thick clotted cream and a signature blend of strawberry and raspberry jam. Pairs with a perfectly brewed cup of tea. Well, uh, we're not drinking tea, but I do think that it should go pretty well with our creamy chocolatey coffee flavors from this stout. Let's see. Oh yeah, fluffy. Fluffy is probably the uh, best way to describe this. You got those sort of fluffy dough notes from the scones, a little bit of uh, sort of strawberry and raspberry and vanilla in there, and then that beautiful creamy chocolate, and they just mix fucking perfectly. It's a, a very voluptuous fucking uh, experience, this one, I reckon. 
Thick would be the other word to describe this pairing. The uh, the scones, they have a kind of thick sort of mouthfeel to them, that thick doughness and uh, the uh, cream in there. And then, that, as I said, extremely fucking creamy stout, this one. Just gives it a, a very sort of fluffy and thick kind of feel with just loads of uh, smooth, velvety mouth tastes. Anyway, enough waffling over the beer. Let's get down the up and fucking close. We're going to have a good squiz at these two, show you obviously the two different colorways they've sent me, and we'll break it down, show you how to take it apart, clean all the ins and outs, and then we'll talk pros and cons. Let's get in there and have a sticky fucking beak. All fucking righty then. So this is the packaging. Your M4H2 will come in pretty sort of standard box from MCM Mods. On the back there, you've actually got the authenticity card and uh, serial number and everything. Let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the mod and an 18650 battery adapter. But let's get into it. So this is the Ultim version. It also comes in uh, black Delrin. And I have just recently seen some really nice acrylic bodies, which look super fucking tasty. The Ultim has got a lovely polished sort of finish to it. The uh, black, a slightly different uh, sort of black finish than the predecessor. The first one had a, a very sort of straight black, your classic Delrin black. This one's got a little bit more of a charcoal kind of look to it. Kind of like that. It's very sort of matte in the, uh, the black finish there. They are absolutely fucking gorgeous, though. Let's uh, run ourselves over it. We've got a uh, 510 connection that is hybrid. So remember, dickheads, with any hybrid mechanical mod, make sure that the pin on your atomizer is protruding. For example, this one here, the gold pin sticking out from the stainless steel threads means it is suitable for hybrid mechanical mods. Don't go putting anything that doesn't have a protruding pin on a hybrid mech like this. Now you've got a pretty hefty platform there. You had to fit up to a 30 millimeter atomizer. You've got 30 millimeters across here and 32 across this side. So yeah, 30 millimeters is going to be pretty fucking nice and flush. You've got a brass top plate, doesn't matter what material you're getting the body in, the uh, metal bits are all going to be brass. You've then got two fire bars. Well, you've got a fire bar and you've got fire buttons. Pretty cool the way they've done this. You've got uh, MCM Mods PH. These are manufactured in the Philippines, if you weren't already fucking aware where MCM Mods are, but uh, yeah, MCM Mods PH, serial number down the bottom here, and this is a fire bar. You've got a connection point just in the base here, so you can sort of squeeze it with your, your fingers like that, or even just in your palm, kind of uh, squeezy style. So that's sort of your traditional fire bar design. You then got the option for a sort of more button type. It's still a bar, but you've got these uh, little bits of Ultim in here that cover up some of the sort of bar type features. So it's more of a button. You can fire it down here. It's quite nice when you're running it in stacked mode because then you can just sort of hold it around the base there and then just use this as a button. You could also fire it here in the middle if you like. You can use it kind of like a bar, but um, yeah, more of a button. So uh, yeah, pretty cool how they've got a double mechanism on the firing. You've got uh, M4H2. But let's have a look at it compared to the M4H1. This has obviously got the stacked piece on the base here, but um, there you go. That's what they look like, sort of single battery side by side. It's a similar sort of concept in that they're both side fire. They have flipped it though. So on the first one, it was a top side fire. On the new one, it's a bottom side fire. They do have, I guess, a little bit of similarities in that you've got the button, the square button here and the square button over here, but the first one didn't have the sort of whole bar firing mechanism like uh, we do have on the version two. So they've changed things up, but as you can see, it's got that kind of uh, you know military rifle type design to it. These sort of cutouts like they did on the first one. Now the first one, I wouldn't say that it was sharp, but it certainly had some harsh edges to it, some pointy kind of harsh edges with all of these sort of cuts and uh, grooves. Whereas on the version two, it's a, a bit more smoothed out. The whole shape is smoother. It doesn't have 
quite as sort of harsh edges. It still has that very much military rifle appeal, but um, a little bit more smooth, a little bit more comfortable in the hand. I really like the changes that they've made to the body. So uh, yeah, definitely a nice little uh, upgrade or a follow on from the V1 with uh, some changes that I definitely enjoy. All right, let's have a look at the fucking battery cap. So you've got a telescopic system. You've got vent holes in the base there. As you can see, that little copper pin is adjustable. So you've got firstly the battery cap to sort of screw in and snug up your battery, but then you can sort of refine the adjustment or refine how far this cap will go in because you've got adjustment on that uh, copper contact there. So you've got your little uh, plunger type finger grooves threads are all buttery fucking smooth as you would expect from MCM mods and out comes your little battery cap. Now what they've cleverly done here is incorporate a little bit of a locking mechanism because you've got Ultim inserts on two sides of the battery cap. Same thing on the black Delrin except it's Delrin not Ultim. But what uh, these do is give you a little spot that if you rotate the battery cap will actually prevent it from firing. So imagine you've got your cap sort of screwed in, screwed in like so. You can kind of see it better on the Ultim. There is your metal sort of connection point. So that's going to fire. Same on this side, it's going to fire. But if I was to rotate the battery cap here, you can see that there is a little Ultim section. So if we spin that over so the Ultim is in front of the fire bar, it's now no longer going to make a circuit, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to lock it in your pocket, what you can do is adjust the uh, battery cap, just back it off uh, a quarter turn essentially, and uh, it will give you some protection from auto firing in your pocket. So I really like what they've done there with the, uh, the battery cap design. Very simple, very clever, and very fucking safe. There's the inside of your tube. Beautiful Ultim machining. Love what they've done. So let's uh, break it down. We might move over to the black one, give you a look at that more closely. But um, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is unscrew these top screws here, which hold our firing bars, but also hold our 510 plate. So we just unwind both of these. Out comes our fire plates. And then we can push our 510 plate out of the block. There is a little bit of uh, Ultim in there. I think there's also a little bit of polish. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, <laughs> gave this thing a bit of a rub with the Brasso before. I've got a little bit of old, a bit of Brasso in there. There we go, clean those two up, get rid of the uh, excess polish. It does have a little Delrin ring around the 510 there that sort of protrudes out further than the brass. That's a little bit of safety. I love to see this. It means if you take your atomizer off and you've got a battery in there and say the battery wrap has a bit of a tear in it, you can't short on the uh, metal around the uh, positive terminal because you've got a uh, bit of black Delrin there just uh, insulating it from the metal um, 510. So quite clever the way they've done that. Uh, there's your fire bars. As you can see, they've got uh, sort of a curved edge to them, so you can clean these terminals if you needed to. And uh, they are all beautifully machined, as you would expect from MCM. So there you go. Pretty fucking simple design. Not a whole lot of pieces. Not complicated to uh, take apart or put together. So let's have a look at the series tube. This is sold separately. It's a big, chunky brass second battery compartment to give you 8.4 theoretical volts running the batteries in a stacked series configuration like the original um, series tube that went with the uh, the first m4 this has got uh, a sort of floating pin uh, in the middle of the tube so that you've got your first battery in here and it's going to be touching this terminal and then on the other side you've got your other battery because you need to have a spacer between your 21700 batteries they don't make a, a solid connection um, just stacking them one on top of each other like so this terminal won't make contact with this one because the battery wraps so uh, what you need is a, uh, a second sort of uh, joining terminal between the two so you imagine you've got your 21700s like so and that's a little bridge in there. You can actually uh, pop this guy out if you needed to clean the little copper bits in there. That just slides back in 
like so. So you put your atomizer on first, put one battery in, screw on your bottom series tube, and then thread on our battery cap. So we just use the uh, mod battery cap in place of the end of the series tube. And I gotta say that I like what they've done here going for something sort of different to the uh, the mod body. On the, uh, the first one, they went with a sort of series uh, tube that very much mirrored the uh, mod itself. What they've done this time is something sort of completely different, but works really well together. I think they just look great, the two, uh, the two sort of styles, the Ultim body and then this lovely hexagonal chunky brass base to it. Uh, and one thing that um, I forgot to mention with this uh, series tube design, like the battery cap that's on the, uh, the base of your mod, this does the same thing. So you've got a Delrin piece here and here and then brass and they need to obviously line up to make a connection with the switch. So in that situation, it'll fire and then if I was to rotate it back half a, half a turn and then I can snug it up with this end so that the tube itself can't rotate back to its sort of uh, firing position, now it won't fire, it is locked. So very clever the way that um, MCM have done this with the firing mechanism lock and um, it works in both single or dual battery modes. But uh, doesn't that look fucking glorious? Beautiful, beautiful fucking mod. So let's quickly throw the black one back together. We've got to put in our button bar first. There we go. I've got the uh, Valhalla 2 Micro on here now. Just set this up the other day and I've uh, been loving it. And I tell you what, it looks pretty nice with this mod. Being a 25 millimeter diameter, it still looks lovely on that uh, 30 millimeter top of the mod. But there you fucking go, dickheads. The M4H2. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, cunts, the M4H2. Some nice changes they've made from the first one, but with uh, enough nods, I think, to the original. Still has that uh, sort of familiar rifle, military rifle kind of look, but um, a little bit more comfortable. Let's get into the pros and fucking cons. What do I like, what do I dislike? Well, as I said, I like what they've done with the uh, the shape. It is much more uh, comfortable in the hand. It doesn't have those harsh edges the first one had, but uh, still looks like, uh, like the original, but with a little bit more uh, sort of refinement. It's a really nice design. I like the side fire mechanism, having two options there, sort of a button design or a bar design, your choice, or you could use both if you fucking wanted to, but uh, a very, very well designed uh, firing mechanism or two. <laughs> and I like the locking feature that they've uh, employed on this thing. Very simple to lock and unlock, gives you safety in your pocket, particularly good with uh, side fire uh, tubes, which can easily fire in your pocket if you don't lock them off. So I like what they've done there. Uh, it really hits hard too, I've got to say. Performance is what you'd expect from MCM. As good as it gets. Easily as good as the first one, as good as your uh, purges, your fucking Russian-made mechs. It is right up there with the best cunt punches. So uh, no disappointment on the performance. Hits like your drunk uncle at your sister's wedding, as I would say. Also like the tension on the bars there. It's got a, a good spring to it. It's not too stiff. It's not too um, flimsy. Really like the, uh, the feel of that fire bar. 30 millimeter diameter on the top means you can put your big RDAs and RTAs. It looks great with your 30 millimeter toppers, but I think it still looks nice with a, uh, a 25. So uh, nice big platform, I'm always a fan of that, but a fairly stocky mod. It doesn't feel big in the hand. Despite it taking a 30 millimeter dripper, it doesn't feel bulky. It doesn't feel like a, a large tube. It has a, a sort of compact feel, I think, because of that short stature, about as short as you're gonna get with a, uh, a tube mod. So. Uh, 
definitely a fucking pro there. Really, really good build quality. The threads are all buttery fucking smooth. All the machining, the engravings, just beautiful. But that's what you would expect from MCM. Another little safety feature, having that Delrin ring around the 510 there, it just means that if you were careless and you took off your uh, atomizer, the battery can't make contact with uh, the metal top cap section and cause a, uh, a hard short if you had a tear in your battery wrap. Always nice to see uh, a couple of bits of safety in a, a tube like this. And the fact they offer a stack section as well is always nice for those that wanna get into uh, the series fucking power. So cons, what could I complain about on these two? Really nothing. The only time I had an issue was with one of my batteries. I'm not sure if it was the battery wrap was a little bit further over the terminal um, than others and uh, it wasn't making a connection around that uh, Delrin ring, the little insulator in the top around the 510. I changed the battery to a different one and uh, it was all good. Uh, but apart from that, I really have had no issues at all and uh, I can't see any fucking design flaws here. It is obviously a little bit top heavy in series <laughs> mode, but that's to be expected. Other than that, Nothing to fucking whinge about, to be honest. It's fucking awesome. Let's talk about the price. What are they going to set you back? Well, uh, I can't put links in the description to where you can pick these up, so don't bloody ask me. But if you do a bit of a Google, there is an MCM website. Uh, they have them listed in Black Delrin for 120 US uh, dollars. You've got Red Delrin, which I didn't mention earlier. Uh, that'll cost you 130 US. Uh, White Delrin will also cost you 130. Uh, and then there is uh, the Ultim, which is a little bit more pricey at uh, 200 US. I also saw a photo on Instagram of the uh, acrylic ones, some swirly acrylics like we've seen MCM do in the past, um, but I don't know what they will cost you, probably something around a similar price to the Ultim. So 120 bucks for the Black Delrin is a bloody good deal, I gotta say, for um, a Filipino made mech of this quality. The uh, series section will cost you $60 US and you can pick that up uh, when you buy the fucking mod. So uh, yeah, look, I think they've done a really good job on the pricing for such a high quality device. If you compare it to American made and Russian made stuff, which it is of equal quality, uh, it really is very, very affordable, a lot cheaper than some other mechs out there that um, are only as good. So uh, with that, dickheads, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Love these two. If you're uh, into your Filipino gear, definitely one to check out, but uh, I'll leave it there. You fuckers, have a bloody good one. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you wanna see what this Muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you wanna support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share the video around, always helps me out, particularly these days when our videos are all age restricted. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to make reviews, I don't do sponsorships, I don't do the sneaky jumping the queue fee. I want to make sure that I'm giving you a truly unbiased opinion on the shit I'm talking about, but to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page for special content, there's a vlog I do on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community, we hang out in the Facebook group, in the Zoom room, we drink beers and we talk shit, and all those fuckers keep me doing my thing, so bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub by me fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a single battery, a stacked battery, or a fucking pod. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Vaping Bogan back again for another Ridgy da 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 da. So your 510 connection up. See, 5 can end. <clears throat> can end connection?